Um, so our common challenge is to make simple a rough topic and thus help the audience uh, understood, understand sorry, health, uh, anticipate uh, e-health perspective, and then project themselves into the, into the future of healthcare. For this FD edition, uh, values is the main uh, keyword, and for our session, uh, the punchline is can tech improve lives. Uh, to perform this magic trick, uh, I'm honored to welcome Samantha. Hey, uh, Jean-Marc Holder. Hello. Lionel Lamo. And Ranjan Singh. Hi, everyone. Pleasure to be here. And we will keep in mind uh, our four main themes, uh, which are impact, entrepreneurship, money, and Europe. So, um, could you please introduce yourself uh, for the first part and clearly explain your vision and what your company is currently doing to improve lives? Maybe Samantha first? Uh, hi everyone, I'm a partner in a VC fund named Elia. Uh, we invest mainly in early stage uh, B2B tech and big tech companies. Early stage means everything from pre-seed to series B. So we put tickets from couple hundred Ks to 10 million first ticket and we keep for follow ones. And we follow the company till the end, either trade sale or IPO. Uh, we had the chance to finance this guy, so happy to be here with you. Um, it's been a couple of years that we invest in health, health tech. We've uh, done dozens of uh, uh, investment in that field, uh, either in genomic, but also in AI uh, for detection, prevention, or whatever. Uh, we've done uh, things in cardiology, in, uh, uh, in many fields, um, and uh, I, I don't have this, uh, I'm not like those guys entrepreneur and so on, trying to, to make money. life change, but at least we finance people that wants to change, to be, uh, to be uh, life to be changed, so. Thank you very much. Jean-Marc, maybe? Sure, so as, uh, as Samantha said, we're one of the Elias stable, and we're focusing on building tools to analyze genomic data, and our vision is we want to make it as easy to get a genomic test done as it is to have a blood test, so everybody can benefit from this revolutionary new technology. Lionel? Okay, thanks. Uh, I am uh, physician associate professor in uh, emergency medicine and work in uh, EMS in Paris, in fact, and I'm president of Save Life. Save Life is in the apps to save life. Uh, when you have a cardiac arrest, citizen can be on the apps. You can do it now. And we have a call, an alert, and you go, you walk, and you do CPR or take an AED, but EMS follow you and give you advice. And we have a second part of work now. It's some uh, mobile unit of uh, teleconsultation for emergency care uh, when we are in a rural place or something else to have uh, uh, some access to care. Thank you. And Ranjan, your vision to improve lives? Thank you. Thank you, Alexander. I'm uh, Ranjan Singh. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Health Hero. Uh, Health Hero is a pan-European telemedicine platform. We essentially uh, bring together digital convenience and human expertise. So essentially get high quality healthcare and take the friction out of accessing that in the best possible manner. Um, we are the European leader today. We are in four countries, UK, Ireland, France, and, and Germany. Um, we serve about 30 million patients uh, through our network um, and do three million patient interactions uh, a year. Um, and 800 people in the company doing that. Um, Alexandra, in fact, uh, the vision for our company, the purpose, is resonates very well with the title of the session, which is uh, for us is simplifying healthcare and improving lives. So I'm delighted to be here. Okay, thank you very much. Lionel, as a physician, uh, what are your three current um, personal convictions about tech and health, actually? I think the tech can uh, give some equality of care today, uh, have better access to care, first of all. The second point, I think we can increase the level of care uh, by control, by technology, but never replace the doctor. That's a major point. And the last point for me is the most important with Solve Life is citizen can help to care. It's, you know, in France, we love to say the care is for everybody. 
it's uh, something we are owner of everybody. And now citizens can take part of the care with uh, tech. Okay, thank you. Jean-Marc, DNA often means uh, science fiction for uh, a lot of people. What are your three personal beliefs about the future of healthcare? Okay, I'd summarize it with three words. One of them is moving from treatment to prevention. And a lot of digital and tech technologies allow you to do that. The second thing is ubiquity. We can lower the cost of delivering high quality healthcare through these new innovative technologies. And thirdly, of course, there's the whole issue of personalization of care, where using technologies like machine learning and big data, we can stop this sort of one size fits all and go to hyper personalized care, which is the key to addressing the challenges of medicine of tomorrow. Okay, Samantha, please, in one word or one sentence, Maxi, uh, what does impact mean to a healthcare investor? Uh, it's a trickiest one because when you first invest in the healthcare sector, obviously you look for an impact. I mean, it's very cool to have done Criteo, Miracle, and that kind of companies. But trying to invest in company that makes save lives, so at least transform the path of the passion journey, um, is something that we're looking for. But Making having an impact is not is not just the key. The key is to be able to and what we're looking for when we look at a company in the healthcare industry is how you enter the value chain of this very bloody bl blurry world of the healthcare industry between passion associations, doctors, hospitals, pharma uh, labs. Uh, manufacturers and so on. When we look at a company, we want to be sure that the company enter this value chain and add something more, add values. Uh, obviously, at the end, the passion should be the priority, but in that space and in every space, it's not the key. It should be something else. And if you enter this word, then you're the market leader, you've done it, uh, and I'm pretty sure that he's gonna do it as well in the genomic industry. Clear, thank you. And you know, Ranjan, as a serial entrepreneur, because you are a serial entrepreneur, how to make impact on health and new care pathways? I think there are two parts to it. What I've learned as a serial entrepreneur in other sectors, and I've been in travel, bits in retail, and then also banking, so there is an intangible learning there, right? That belief that things will change because we've lived through that. These all have been massive industries transformed through digital. So I'm okay and I'm happy to play the long game because I've seen that it has worked elsewhere in, in other sectors. Now we are going more tangibly in healthcare through similar waves. So initially, let's say five, six years back, what we call healthcare 1.0, what happened was Everybody saw the potential of this massive industry and how digital could change it, jumped into it, and put two people and, and enabled video call, and they said that they are disrupting healthcare, which is never a great thing to say anyway, but just by making two people talk on phone, you're hardly disrupting. So that was healthcare 1.0. There was a pathway. People came in and digitized one component of it, made appointment booking digital, made the consultation on video, which is great, slightly convenient for the patient, but did fundamentally nothing to change the issues facing the healthcare system, capacity, efficiency, and all those issues. In the second wave, which I refer to as healthcare 2.0, the more innovative company said they're providing an end-to-end -end holistic care doing a digital thing. But what they're actually doing is taking an existing inefficient pathway and digitizing that. Far more better for the patients, for sure, but very marginal impact on the system. What we are doing as Health Hero is what I call Healthcare 3.0, and this is about really reinventing, reimagining kind of healthcare so that one size doesn't fit all. We are not following the same archaic pathway that whether you have a really simple issue as a chronic patient wanting repeat prescription or cold and cough or 
something like mental health or very sinister, you're not following the same pathway or landing up to your GP and then uh, you know, going from there. What we are doing, using our clinical offering and digital and tech platform, reconfiguring it so that we provide that bespoke pathway to that individual. So in, in essence, marrying experience on the patient side and efficiency on the system side. So that's what we're doing as a business. Okay, amazing. Thank you very much. Lionel, why use is the main goal of a tech solution? How can you be sure that patient and professional will widely use your solutions and then save lives? Okay, we are never sure. Never. This is uh, one first point, I think. Um, MedTech is very special, in fact. It's not clearly like other business. You have some professional, and generally professional are not tech everywhere. And you have the patient uh, vision. I think for what we're doing for Soft Life, first of all, when we have the ID, as really first part, I, I think I have just two slides at the start. I go to uh, scientific consulting of uh, the Society of uh, Emergency Medicine and all society scientific to say, are you okay if I develop these things? Are you okay? Are you a part of the job? Yes or not? This is a real problem because, uh, as you know, in the business, we would like to be secret, likely secret at the start. But the risk, if you don't speak with other people, you develop something, nobody uses it. That's one of the major parts of the problem. And after, for my part, is because we work not with a patient, because the patient is unconscious and can do nothing, it's with a citizen. And we have broken the line. And this is the first time or we said everybody can do something. And we're consulting a lot of people. And we ask, are you ready to help someone? And a lot of people said, oh, I'm a little bit afraid to do something wrong. And I said, we have no death. Our death or small death is dead. Do something is better than nothing. And we change the line. And this is we. I think the communication with each part, patient attending, professional attending is very important before you develop something. Uh, I'm a doctor and I hate when someone has developed something, he arrived, he said, this is a good thing, I'm sure. No, if you, I don't work in the development, it's not good. So, so the axis is citizens and not only patients? Yes. Okay, Ranjan, in addition to user, um, and citizens, um, should you even become, or are you already, a key global partner of national healthcare systems? Um, yes and yes. I think you should. Yes be and yes. <laughs> yes and yes. You should be partners with the national health system, because especially in Europe, I mean, a national health system is how healthcare is mainly delivered, right? I mean. Um, out-of-pocket market is very small and even private insurance market different in different countries but marginal. If you as an entrepreneur, as a company, want to have impact uh, in how healthcare is delivered, national systems are a necessary partner. Um, so that's the first part of the yes. Second part of yes is yes, we really closely work with uh, national systems. We are one of the leading providers to NHS in, in the UK, um, in France, uh, there isn't an equivalent entity, but our business model is catering to uh, that uh, reimbursement-based model where we reach uh, users directly, simplify that access, and get reimbursed. Similarly, in France, um, Germany, and Ireland as well. Okay, thank you, Jean-Marc. I gave you, I kept a touchy question for you. <laughs> you are based in France. Do you think it's quite easy to create an EL venture in your own country, France? Or do you think other countries are more welcoming and uh, you should expand elsewhere? Well, I, I would say that each country has its own challenges and its own advantages. You know? In France, you have access to a huge amount of in, you know, intellectual capital. Uh, you have a centralized healthcare system, which is one of the best in the world, in my opinion. You know, on the other hand, there is a little more resistance in some cases. So I think you know, France is a great place to do business and a great place to start a healthcare company. Um, the challenge is, is really a cultural one because I think when you come from the world of you know, digital, fast moving, you know, go fast and break things, you, know, you kind of can end up with a Theranos-like problem, right? So the issue is how you adjust the, 
the culture of your company to be synchronized with, you know, again, just as, as uh, Aranjan and um, Alexandre said, sorry, as uh, Lionel said, you know, how you synchronize yourself with uh, the healthcare practices in the, in the local market. And yes, definitely, to answer your second question, you know, like all companies, Sec1 is actively expanding internationally because I think, you know, you need to do that in order to, you know, get the kind of coverage and scalability that's required to, to build the technologies we're trying to build. Okay, thank you. Samantha, another touchy question. Money and health are often like a w water and fire. Uh, do you think it's time to reconcile them? Uh, of course, yes. Um, I'm not very agree with what you said, being said that France is the best, or at least one of the best country to start, because we have uh, a lot of problems in terms of financing, and uh, I can talk about this because there's not a lot of financing here. And when you start making uh, investment in that field and that you see that there's plenty of other companies in different fields that, and w we're part of it as well, but that raise thousands of millions of euros and dollars and so on, and that a company that is supposed to save life or is about to, uh, uh, to discover something that maybe will change lives because of st clinical studies and so on, you have a really huge problem of financing here in France. Huge problem of financing, a huge problem of market access as well, because even if we have the social security and so on, we have a problem of reimbursement for a company in the med tech industries. Um, there's plenty of companies, startups company in AI, AR, VR, whatever, that should be reimbursed as medication is reimbursed today because it's 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 partly the same. So, and it's not the case today, and it should be, and it should be, uh, it should be faster than it is today. So, uh, I'm pretty sure we can solve this and reconcile this, but we need to be really pushy on this financement and market access. Okay, thank you very much. Time is running. Last question, Ranjan. Um, what could you be your three do and don't for a new entrepreneur, maybe in this uh, room? I wish I had a clear one, but in, in healthcare, I mean, have tons of patience, that's important. And two, as Jean-Marc said, do not try to come here with a digital mindset of move fast, break things. That, you'll break yourself. I mean, it, it doesn't, it just doesn't work. It's a very, very different sector. And many digital entrepreneurs have come in here being excited about the sector, try to do that and have crashed and burned and it's not pretty. Thank you very much to you for all. We are just on time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.